Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful tropical little waterfall painting. It should be a lot of fun. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start today here with our one inch brush and just the tiniest speck of blue and white. I just mixed them down here. And okay, I also put a little bit of clear gel and white at the top. And so I just take this and oh boy, that doesn't really change the color at all, does it? But that's okay. I want this to be a really, really washed out sky. The reason? Because I'm working from a photograph. And this is one of probably a few that you're gonna see from a recent trip that we took. And not to a jungle, to a garden. They had all sorts of cool things there. So I'm sure we'll show you some more pictures, but this is pretty much straight up from a picture. Really no changes at all. So anyway, this, that's, that's probably good enough. If you're wondering about my canvas here, I was playing around with some acrylic, a little project there, and I needed to reuse the canvas because I was out of canvases, so a little bit of gesso over that. So you can put gesso over acrylic, but you cannot put it over oil paint. It doesn't last, it cracks off. All right, let's maybe grab a little, after all that explanation, let's grab a little bit of our green. I'm just gonna toss some green up and around here as well. Just scrub it in. The canvas is dry, but the, the brush has a little medium from right here, and you kind of grab it mush it around. Now I've been adding just a little bit of dark color as I've come down. You see that very light at the top and then I grab some darker greens and black as we go down. Creates a nice effect and I'm just going to continue to do that. Now every, I don't want everywhere to be just black so you see I'm really adding a wide variety of color throughout this area in the underpainting. You guys know how I like to do that and you guys probably know why I like to do it so that you build you know a lot of layers and you build contrast and depth in your underpainting so that when you go to highlight, it's already set up for you. There. Now, in this picture, you know, it was, it was taken long and skinny. So this canvas is not so long and skinny. So as I'm trying to match, you know, the placement of things so that at least it feels similar, I'm having to adjust it a little, like I'm having to make, you know, things a little taller, squish them in a little, which is fine. That's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. But it's just taking me an extra two seconds to kind of figure out, make sure I like, you know, the way it's flowing. I really like the picture. Very rarely do you get a picture, you just say, yep, that's it, and you don't make any changes to it at all. And I think we've got a couple more good ones like it too. Maybe some flowers and stuff coming up in the near future. Now I've got just a little bit of blue and white. I don't want too much blue in this, so I might just throw in a speck of red as well. All right, that looks looks decent, doesn't it? All right, let's see what this looks like up here. Now, of course, I've got my rocks, but I'm gonna ignore them for just a minute, and I'm going to start on my little waterfall. I'm gonna be as accurate to the photo as I can be without driving myself nuts, because I don't wanna do that. <laughs> there we go. It's not important that it's the same. It's just kind of for me, really. It's not really, it's not really the paint, you know, the painting's gonna be fine, whether this waterfall looks like the one that we saw or doesn't. There. There's not much paint here. These two areas, you see they're very, very, very little paint. If you do this and there's a lot of paint down, oh, you're going to have brown water <laughs> there. Actually, I want it to go a little taller. There we go. Maybe it's kind of, yeah, kind of falling and then this rock is actually out. I think that's the way it is. And this here kind of trickles down. Nice. And we just sort of, oh, that's too, that's too much there. That's a little too bright, so I'm gonna darken it. So see how you kind of work with your color? There, you see that darker? Oh yeah. Stroke it a couple more times there. Good. Not bad at all. I, I'm liking this. This is gonna be a fun one. I can already tell. Now we're gonna finish up here placing on just a, you know, a couple of mid-tones. I really, I just did this quick couple of brush strokes, not worried about it because we're gonna come back and highlight, and that's the part I really, really think you'll find more interesting. Because these mid-tones, they're just sort of there. If you know we end up covering them great, if we end up having to mush them out with dark, that's fine. <laughs> then there's actually one over here too. Okay, that's looking just about right. Let's throw in a couple more mid-tones over on this side as well. Just, just to give us a feeling of a little light back here. We may cover this up. Now I'm going to load up my little blender brush with some white and yellow, mostly white. I know I don't paint with the blender much because it's really not meant for that. It's meant for blending, but we are going to be blending. So up here, I 
I really want to wash this area out. Not so much over here, but really over here. And we can do that before we put the tree stuff in, because then we can just put the tree st stuff in, you know, with lighter tones. It'll still look washed out. So, okay, that's enough of that. Let me just come up here, I'm starting in my little sky area. And the sky was blue over here. Not so much blue snuck over here, so no worries. Even if this turns a little bit of green, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to roll this, starting, of course, in the light area, working my way out. Make sure you wash your beautiful blender brush out super well before you store it. There, because this sort of thing clogs the brush with paint. Okay, that's probably enough rolling. I'm gonna now stroke it, and I'm gonna bring, oh, this is working really well. Yeah, bring this out. This blender brush is just crazy, I love it. It layers, it's so soft, it layers paint over paint without any, virtually any mixing at all. Good stuff. Cool, okay, so that really helps. See how that washes that area out? I don't want it to look rolled, because that's so overdone <laughs> in my mind. Yeah, hey, this is just my thoughts. I, a lot of the times we want to come in and roll mist. This time, it's not really mist, it's just being burned out by the sun. So I'm gonna do different strokes. There. So I've also quickly added up here just a few, I don't know, extra limbs. I felt like it needed it. Up here, I'm doing this by just tapping. And the reason I'm tapping instead of sliding, see, I did a couple of larger ones over here. I, I slid those down like we always do. This is stuff you guys know how to do. The reason I'm tapping them is because it kind of gives me a, a rough texture, almost like the bark is peeling off. And we're gonna do a lot of that to these trees here. I think it just gives it a better look. Maybe let's shape that tree right here. Good. So we just sort of do this over and over again. We do need a few more little limbs here. I mean, we really should have tons and tons of these limbs because there's lots of plants growing. So, you know, there's ones there. And honestly, you can just kind of stab at random. Some will look like leaves and maybe not totally at random, but you know what I mean. Some will look like leaves and others kind of like taller trees. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab our detail round. And I've got just a little bit of a nice light color here. We can we can highlight these rocks now. Kind of more, more of an exciting thing to do. There. So you gotta think here. The light's kind of filtering, not necessarily through this area, maybe a little higher up and kind of casting its way down. So the highlights are kind of on the top of the rocks, but also on the left-hand side. See how you can make, oh, that's pretty. Now you see I'm using my little detail round. And if you have trouble making the stick, just wipe down this area with a paper towel a little. It should come off okay. If you press too hard, it may mix. So load up more paint, don't press any harder. <laughs> there you go. Let's see right there's a touch, yep, right there. So it just comes right off. There, not bad. I'm just gonna keep working on this over and over again. I'm going to take my time highlighting, so. There. And be very careful not to get this highlight around where you're going to highlight the water because this is going to be, you know, you don't want to get it any more slippery than it is. And one thing that's kind of interesting that we don't normally get here is I've got brush strokes running. I don't know if you can see them or not, but I can see brush strokes running throughout the entire painting because of, remember, we gessoed that canvas because there was an acrylic painting behind it. You remember that? So. I mean, that's kind of cool. I, I like that textured effect. So in my brush strokes, there's kind of some modeling going on, which is really kind of fun. I just thought I'd point that out. I'm, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can. And I think it looks nice. There. So now I'm really trying just to absorb some of the, the loose oil paint. Now, the rocks are pretty thick, but the waterfall is fairly thin. I'm going to try to get it, get, remove some more paint. I don't want to say get it even thinner, because we really we're not thinning, look at that, not too much came off. We're not really thinning the paint like you'd think, like, oh, you know, make it slippery. No, we're actually, we're making the layer, we're putting so little paint in this layer that, watch this, we can just highlight, it's pure. Look at this. Isn't that crazy? In fact, I even see canvas texture. It's, it's that much of just a stain on the canvas. I'm using a fairly old detail round. You could do this just as easily with a, with a new one. Oh yeah, this is gonna look so good. Look at the light as it crashes down. It's illuminating a little fall here. Make sure you get a nice 
top to the waterfall as well. Good. This is really exciting. And you know what? It's not going to follow the photo, but that's okay. I'm just kind of going with it at this point because I'd rather get a pleasing shape to the waterfall. There. Now let's go ahead and drop in, oh, very carefully here, a sun ray. There. Oh, I love doing these. I don't do them very much. Now, as you can see here, we are picking up a little bit of paint. I've already kind of went over the top there a couple times just to make sure that it was going to work. There. So let's, I'm going to not worry about that tree. Let's paint as if it isn't there. Let's go right to the other side of it. Drag. Drag as straight as possible. <laughs> oh, you got to have a light touch. And so when you do this, you want to make sure also that you have a nice background that doesn't have a lot of wet and slippery paint. You can see what that tree did. The moment I hit that tree, which was pretty thick, it just gone. So you got to be careful about that. Don't go over this too many times. You only get one or two shots at it. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm pressing so lightly that the bristles of this already pretty soft brush are not even bending. All right, so I may need to work on that top of it a little. I do like the bottom. Let's come right about here, maybe. Oh boy. Huh. I love doing this. I love showing you stuff like this. Maybe kind of skip. Oh, that tree. There we go. I'm just going to keep reloading here. So you see how you kind of have to be delicate with it. Soft, 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 soft brush strokes. Right down. See how you just laid your eye right into that waterfall? I love it. Oh, I was so excited when I saw those sun rays in person. Okay, so I'm going to add more than is actually there just for fun. To make it appear as though light is really filtering through the jungle. Light touch with this. You can always wait for it to dry and use a, a dry brush blending technique with like a filbert brush if you don't want to take the chance of doing it this way, which is totally fine. Don't blame it one bit. I probably would if I didn't want to get it done today. Next, let's add on some beautiful highlight here to some bamboo because if you look close, you'll see bamboo when you look at that scene, remember? It's not everywhere. It's kind of mostly on the right-hand side in the background. And we've painted bamboo once before. I'm not going to go crazy like I did then. Well, I loved going crazy. It was a lot of fun. But what I'm trying to say is it's not, this is not a bamboo painting. It's just sort of there. If people look at it and say, oh, what, you know, what nice little trees in the background. Well, great. That's, you know, not a big deal. If somebody figures out it's bamboo, well, that's fun. And you guys will know, too, so. Now a lot of this blank area here in the foreground is going to be filled with, with these large tropical plants. You know, the big, big leafed ones. And they only grow in the really wet tropical areas that are protected from the elements and stuff. There. Their leaves are so fine they get shredded easily. And so you really don't, we don't see them a lot around here. So it's kind of fun to see them. All right. Up over here. Got it. Just like that. They get a little bit smaller as they go back, but like when you're standing right against them, they got to be like a couple feet across easily. There. So make it big in the foreground, like, you know, good three, four inch big, you know, make them look right. I'm going to throw just a touch of blue in that color just to make it feel different from the background. There. Good. Of course, you'll highlight these, but not too much. There we go. And, and anything that you kind of don't like, you can always go back over it again. Because I know sometimes getting these little leaf shapes is not the easiest thing in the world. So you can always try again. I may have to. There. So no worries. Now, really, the last major thing that we need to do you know, minus the refining stuff, which is going back and kind of adding a shadow or highlight here and there. The big thing here is to get this grass in. Get, go ahead and get it in now. 
and that's what we're gonna do. Some of it bends over like this. Some of it, you know, goes in all, all kinds of different directions, so. There. Oh, this is so cool. Now, obviously, I know you're thinking, well, put it in with a liner brush. And I really, I may do that. Just I wanna get started here with the three-quarter brush. It comes to a beautiful sharp chisel, so. I mean, you could totally do this with, with the three-quarter brush. There, and it maybe will get you some bigger ones. Those liner brush ones are, tend to be very skinny, which is good for almost every landscape painting. But this one's a little different because these are so large, these grasses. There. This is so cool. I love these. And this kind of, uh, I want to put some over here too. It's kind of interesting because these grasses, they're close, and so they're big, but they're just big, <laughs> so they're big. You know, my guess was maybe they were two to three, maybe four inches wide in person, so we're talking big. Maybe this isn't even grass, I'm really not sure what this is, but it's painted like grass, so we'll just think of it like that for the painting. Just to help me get it in. There. There we go, that looks good. We'll just continue doing this. It really does need to, it reaches all the way up to these bottom of these trees, which is kind of amazing. It does get smaller as it goes back, but not a lot. Not a lot. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brush Line. Thanks for watching.